Our mission, Helping Parents Heal, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents. Through support and resources offered, we aspire to help individuals become shining light parents, meaning a shift from a state of emotional heaviness to one of hopefulness and greater peace of mind. Helping Parents Heal goes a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and afterlife evidence in a non-dogmatic way. Helping Parents Heal affiliate groups welcome everyone regardless of religious or non-religious background and encourage open dialogue. Attendance at all Helping Parents Heal meetings is voluntary. All discussions that take place at affiliate-led meetings are confidential. We hope that participants will learn from and share with each other. Zoom meetings run by leadership are not confidential. These meetings typically feature guest presenters and are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members worldwide can watch and benefit. Neither type of Helping Parents Heal meeting is designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers, allowing parents to learn about many possible ways to heal. This includes presenters covering progressive topics, such as afterlife evidence and connecting with our children who have passed. The views expressed by our guest speakers may or may not reflect the opinions of helping parents heal leaders and members, so we ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you could join us, and thank you, Shelley, for being here. Yes, thank you, Shelly, for being here. And I just want to let everybody know that Shelly has told us that she, again, wants to donate all of the proceeds, all of the uh, donations, the love donations that you're giving back to Helping Parents Heal, which really helps us because it allows us to be able to put together scholarships, make the conference less expensive and uh, cover costs of running Helping Parents Heal. But I'm going to read her short bio very quickly. Shelley Wilson is an intuitive medium, Reiki master, life coach, author, and inspirational speaker who is passionate about helping people wake up to their greatness. She supports others as they navigate their own journey into consciousness to experience aliveness. Shelley has an innate ability to meet people where they are while offering a tailored approach intended to bolster their own connection to spirit. She illuminates each person's unique soul key and helps individuals reignite their spark while reminding them of the power that they behold. During classes and private sessions, she creates a space for empowered transformation and provides a pra uh, practical, actionable tools. Shelley's books, 28 Days to a New You, Connect to the You Within, Journey into Consciousness, and Embracing the Magic Within are available in paperback and ebook. She is also the creator of Cards of Empowerment and Clarity Cards. She has six self-study courses currently available on the Teachable platform. And to learn more about Shelly, you can go to ShellyRWilson.com. There's more information that I will be putting on the YouTube video. I want to thank Shelly again for um, giving her donations to Helping Parents Heal. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming Shelly Wilson. Welcome, Shelly. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and thank you, Irene, and I am always blessed to be able to connect with all of you in this way. You know, once again, we know that Zoom has been so magnificent for us to be able to make these connections in this way. And tonight, I am delighted to be able to make some connections to you, for you, with your loved ones, with your children in spirit. And I always like to start these presentations with just a few questions that you may have. So I'm going to talk just a bit more, but as you're guided to, please post in the chat and Elizabeth will read those questions to me. 
And what I want to remind you too is just remember to breathe. Just remember to take those moments to pause, to connect more deeply to yourself. And as you're doing that, you're going to help to build that connection with your children. I know sometimes it may seem that we don't sense our loved ones, but actually many times it's just our energy and the way that we feel that sometimes where we don't feel like we feel them, if that makes sense. Because when things feel a bit overwhelming or stressful, or we're tired even, or there are, once again, are things happening in our external circumstances that pull at our energy, it may take us away from feeling balanced and centered and grounded. So when you want to make that connection, once again, take some big deep breaths, relax, Breathe in deep, deeply, focusing on the energies of peace and love and ease, compassion and connection, and then do your best to exhale any fear and worry and doubt. And as you do that and move into the heart space, I assure you, you'll feel their presence. And once again, many times, because they do blend with our energy, we may feel those physical sensations the coolness, the tingling, the buzzing, even what we refer to as God bumps or truth bumps. So remember that. And also move your body because anytime you're dancing, walking, anything that you're doing to move your body, that helps to bring your energy into that heart space as well, which then also helps to lighten and brighten our vibration. So with that, I would love to answer a few questions before I start making some connections tonight. Okay, we have a few questions here. Um, first of all, uh, let's see, Carla is asking, how do we know that our children are okay? So that's a wonderful question. And I will tell you that when you have the memories of them coming into your mind, when you see them, that is absolutely their way of saying, I'm here, mom, I'm with you. I'm here, dad, I'm with you. And the more that you can trust that all is well, that if they're in this place of infinite love and pure energy, pure light, then they want to assure you that all is well once again. Beautiful. That's, that's a great answer. And then also, we have another one. Hello, Shelly. How do you know a, you have a dream visit and not just a dream about your loved one? Ah, I, I think they could be one in the same aspect actually. And if anything, the dream visit is going to leave an impression. And you know, many times that dream will do the very same. So I have to say it may be difficult to actually say that they are different. Because I, I just feel once again, whether they come to you during your sleep state, in your dream time, or they're coming through during your waking hours. And sometimes it may be very brief. So do remember that, but just know that that's their way of letting you know once again, that they're with you. Beautiful, thank you. Um, and then uh, we have a question about reincarnation. How do we know that our children will, will wait for us instead of reincarnating beforehand? <clears throat> So I think if anything, this may be an agreement that you make. It may be too, just a reminder that from my perception, many times there is a period of time before we choose as souls to come back. And if anything, if this comes into our soul contract and so on, but I feel like if you can even have a conversation and just say, you know, I would love for you to be there for me, you know, I feel like they will honor that request too. I, I honestly don't know that we know in advance how long we plan to stay here physically or how long we are on the other side before we choose to return. So I feel like that's probably an individual contract, if that makes sense. That's beautiful. But yes, I also want to just add that I've heard that we can be in multiple places at the same time. So even if they do decide to reincarnate, 
they can also be on the other side with us. Is that true? I feel like there's parts of us that will always continue and parts of us that will stay there. So I would say that that would be very similar to what you're saying, Elizabeth. Okay, wonderful. Um, we also have a question here. Um, if a tragic death, for instance, to gun violence um, happens, do our children uh, leave their bodies before uh, any pain might be experienced? I absolutely believe that. And I got chills as Elizabeth was asking the question. And to me, chills are confirmation and validation of truth. And, and I just feel that they're being lifted, they're coming out, that there's no reason for them to feel on a soul level what their physical body may experience. So I, I absolutely believe that. Beautiful. My ears ring very loudly since my dad and daughter passed. Is this normal? I just have to say, I get ringing in my ears every time that we have these meetings. So I don't know. I'm sure that you're going to um, uh, agree with this, that I believe that this is our kids and maybe your dad talking to us. So what do you think, Shelly? I would agree. And I did get chills with that, too. And, and what we want to know is that is a type of clear audience. And we can even think that as downloads or connections and think of it as a vibration. So we're tuning in to those higher frequencies. And even though we may not hear actual audible words, we have to know that we're connecting to that frequency. Beautiful. We have lots of questions, actually. Paul, maybe this could be the last question. Okay. So we can yeah, get sounds on good. Um, to the readings. But Paul is asking, can spirit actually manipulate physical objects in this consciousness? And I know what you're going to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, definitely anything electronic can be easily affected. So lights flickering, our phones, computers, things like that. I wouldn't necessarily say they malfunction, but I would say that they are being affected. And then as far as physical objects moving, absolutely they can. Can because if we realize once again that everything is energy, they are pure energy and even energy in motion, they can absolutely affect things so that they do move. Beautiful. That's that's exactly what I would have answered. <clears throat> had some incredible things moving in my house since uh, Morgan has passed. So that's a that's a wonderful way of explaining it. Um, and now if you'd like to, and um, if you feel like this is the right time, we can get- it sounds good. I, I wanna add one more thing to that last question. And just as a reminder, they don't wanna scare us, frighten us, anything like that. If anything, it's a means to get our attention, to take note. So when you say, I see that, and you speak to them, more than likely, It'll stop. However, it could continue just as validation that you were on tar target and speaking with them. So I want to be sure and mention that. Yes, that's so, really Thanks. Yeah, so tonight, as I have done before, I am going to connect with your loved ones. I will do as many as I can during our time here, but please know I won't be able to connect with everyone's. What I do ask is that when I provide the information and it does come through for me in thoughts and feelings and impressions, it is coming through my filter, which is my frame of reference. So I do my best to describe to you what it is that I receive. And I ask that you also, if it connects with you, all of it, for the most part, or at least most of it, then please um, write that in the chat so that Irene and Elizabeth can identify you and then we can unmute you and make that connection. Also, what I like to recognize too is many times our loved ones join forces to build the energy. Some people use the term piggybacking, but I prefer the term joining forces. So there may be more than one that is very similar coming together. And sometimes too, they come in and as a way to bring through others. And what I wanna tell you, please don't be disappointed if your loved one doesn't come through tonight 
also know that more than likely your children are very loving, very respectful, and they more than likely like to let people have turns, like, like to let others have turns. So if they're just not jumping in, please don't read more into that at all, okay? So let's just all take a big deep breath and just focus on breathing once again in the energies of peace and love and ease, compassion and connection. As we exhale any worry or doubt and just getting our energy nice and grounded as I'm beginning to make that connection to those out here. I like for the energy here to feel balanced because I am empathic so I can pick up your energy as well. And so the first one that's at the front of the line here, he's coming in and he's just kind of moving his way forward. I, I feel like this is an excitement. He's not trying to butt in a line or anything like that, but he's showing me almost like he just wants to, you know, make this connection. When I look at him, he looks to be around, I would say 13 to 15. It could be a little older, a little younger, but I feel like he was a teenager. I'm seeing reddish hair with him. And I see probably going through puberty, you know, that age when uh, boys are a little fuller in the face, a little fuller in the body. But he gives me this sense of his passing being sudden and unexpected. I also get a sense from him too, that he just went to sleep and didn't wake up. This doesn't feel like substance or anything like that. This feels almost like there was an undetected health issue, perhaps heart health issue that was not discovered until after he made the transition. And I get a sense too that just a very happy young man, I get a sense too that he would, I don't want to say be a bit of a clown, but he gives me this sense of making people laugh, making people feel good. So as I'm describing this young man, can anyone um, take this and does it resonate with you? We have um, a few that are, I think it does sound yeah, like it Nolan. Sounds like Nolan. I thought the same. You know, it was, Nolan's, it was Nolan's either angel date or birthday just two days ago. And so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if it is Nolan. I, the whole time that you were describing him, that's Same she said. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Warren or Sheila are on here tonight. No, um, they're not. I checked. Because he's definitely a redhead. And just such a happy kid. Yes, and I'm getting chills as, as you're talking about him because I get this sense almost like he's wanting to say, hi, I'm popping in. You know, I get this sense from him too of having a big heart. And as I said, I do feel heart is what the issues were with him. Um, but he he's just, he gives me this feeling of being famous. So I don't know if, if they've been yes. using his platform or um, how how this is, but it's like, um, it feels like he was entertaining. I don't know if it was more than the family prior to his passing, but also giving me this sense of entertaining now. So yeah. I don't know how that would be, but that's what he singer wants me to himself. say yeah. also. Yeah, he's a singer. Okay. So he to reach Warren right now, but I don't know if I will or not. Darn it. Um, that's exciting um, he's saying he wants them to keep going so i i just want to say he wants okay. them to keep going so whatever his parents are doing for him um because this feels like a legacy that continues to grow and he just gives me this sense of i'm celebrating with you i'm celebrating with you and there is something too i don't know if there's a foundation or something established in his memory. But but he's just saying the more that people talk about it, the more it will grow. And and I just get this presence about him as well. Yeah. Well, they can watch this. We'll let them know. Yeah, we'll let them know. I good. Uh, good. I am yeah. so sorry that he's um in fact, I don't know if um everybody can see. Ah. Uh, this is hold it over your face area. There we go. Oh, I see redhead. Yes. Okay. Very good. And his name's Nolan. His mm -hmm. name's Nolan. And 
Um, I just feel like this, uh, when you started talking about him, I thought that that was probably who you were talking about. Uh, but it's a beautiful message. And thank you so much. Yes, and we'll let them. We'll let them. Now, I'm, I'm curious if anyone else resonated with even a portion of this, too. I think Corey did, I believe. Um, um, brownish red hair, Corey is saying. So sun passed in the middle of the night. He was 20. Mm -hmm. Now, did by chance he look younger than his age too? Because, um, okay, and I see Judy. Oh, yes, I just so. got chills with Judy. Let by chance bring bring her on. Um, only because as I was getting ready and blow drying my hair right before I came up here, I heard a young man say, um, my mom's name is Judy. Tell her I'm here. Okay, so I, I just, and I got chills as soon as I said that again. So I just kind of okay. took it in and didn't sure. um, do anything with it until this moment. She's here. Hi, Judy. Hi. Hi, there you are, Judy. And so <laughs> you indicated, um, tell me your son's name. His given name with me was Gabriel. Uh -huh. His dad, he was known as Rocky. Rocky, okay. And so he was around that age and build, but not the hair color? He had a twin. He was six weeks from their 16th birthday, but he was a tall kid. Uh -huh. And he had very dark hair. His, his twin was like, like me normally like a light brown dark blonde hair blonde, uh -huh. uh, you know light okay. complexion blue eyes Gabe is the caramel complexion his dad was his original his biological dad was um a native american he had the gorgeous dark eyes and you know the dark hair and that caramel skin okay so you indicated that his passing was sudden and unexpected also we had no idea they the twin has it too Borgata syndrome it's a heart thing it's rare it's five out of ten thousand have it only known about it like since 89 okay so and let's he let's just collapsed just... running on the track okay so he was on the track okay so i think this is where nolan and your son rocky joined forces to get this message if anything nolan was helping to usher him in for you now with i was Rocky, talking to him beforehand that i've gone to so many and i was like even you haven't showed up but i really really okay really I, would need you to okay well let's let's just take a moment and let me build his energy some more judy so just breathe and receive <laughs> and while you're there I invite you to feel the sensations that you feel on your physical body because he's going to blend with you. And it's like he's, he's laughing right you now a great big hug and, and you'll probably feel some vibration on your hair as well. But I just get this sense. It's almost like he just wants to rub your back. There's something about assuring you, mom, that it's going to be OK. Now, have you been having some heart health issues also, Judy? And this I, may be broken heart. This may be sadness. Too. I, it's been almost 19 months and just a few, just several days ago, I started to finally break out of that, that foggy, surreal mm -hmm. thing where you can't have any joy, but for like a second and it's gone. It just, just recently, and spring is my season, just recently, I, the rainbow hair. Yes. Um. I've just been finally clawing my way into okay. like so, saying, oh God, that was so pretty. And then not immediately feeling like, shut up, you know? Right. Okay. So Judy, what Rocky wants to say, first of all, is he, he just wants to give you a hug and he wants you to say, mom, you have to start, stop talking so you can hear me. So, so the idea too, I know you have a lot to say to him, but remember communication now with him is thoughts, feelings, and impressions. So you may actually hear things in your mind, but you may also too just have the knowingness that he's with you, okay? He wants to 
assure you, first of all, that he's okay. And he doesn't want you to worry about him. If anything, he says, you've got to take better care of yourself. So he's just wanting you to make sure that you get the rest that you need and to stop worrying. And if anything, this may be a message with Nolan as well, reminding you to connect more deeply to music, connect more deeply. Oh my God, the fact that you Doing just said those that. things are oh my really God. important too, right? I don't know if you've heard about Couch Choir from Australia, mm -hmm. from the pub choir. They, I was just participated in one. They have something real quick in Australia where every month they do a cup of, everybody joins. You just learn it all in parts yeah. and then yeah. you perform for a paying audience and it goes to charity. But they couldn't do it during the pandemic, so they created Couch Choir, and you did it video submissions and from all over the world. And then they can put in. I got it, chills head to toe with that, Judy. And so I if just, you're singing it. Just, I, it just came out, the one that I finally got to get into before submissions were passed. Well, and I was doing it for Davey. And then when you said that, I'm like, yes. I just did. I love that. And, and so if anything, keep doing that, keep singing, <laughs> keep connecting. And, and when you do that, he's going to connect with you. He wanted well. him to say it. I wanted absolutely. him to know. Well, he knows. Absolutely. He knows. And if anything, you know, the more that you invest your time and energy in those things that bring you joy as well, it's going to help to build that connection between you and him also. So he's saying, mom, don't get discouraged. Don't give up. I'm with you, but he's saying this very laughingly. He said, but you got to stop talking so that you can hear me. Okay. So I want to leave you with that. Too. Yes. <laughs> Keep talking to him, but then you got to be quiet. So you hear his responses. Okay. So I'm going to leave you with that, Judy. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Judy. And we have, we she have another Warren. Judy too. I just oh. saw. Yes, but we also have Sheila and Warren who are Nolan's. Oh, wonderful, friends. wonderful. Let's bring them on if that works. Yeah. Yes, yes I've asked them to unmute. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Let me see if I can find them to spotlight them. Yeah. Um, okay, are you able? Oh, there, there we are. There we are. Hello. <laughs> yes. Good. So I saw um, Elizabeth calling you. I'm sure others did. But as I yeah. said, the first message coming in uh, was this very handsome young man. And he's just like wanting to rush his way. I don't know if he was doing some type of routine when he was coming in, but he was like full steam ahead wanting to make his presence known. And they recognized that this, this is Nolan. As I said, I knew that um, he was redheaded. He passed unexpected and get a sense that this was um, something that just happened and mm -hmm. that you found out later what was uh, going on, but it did feel like health issues, something heart health issues with that. Um, now, as I was tuning into him too, he just gave me this sense that it's important for you to keep growing in his music, keep doing what you're doing. It's because he just gives me this sense about touching lives people need it now and, and just giving me this sense about being famous, you know, and using that platform to help others. Mm -hmm. So I know that whatever inspiration that you get from him directly because he tells me he's writing all the time and I just get like all of these songs flowing from him through each of you so as you're guided to just be his hand and be his manager I don't know if you were actually his manager or agent or something like sure. <laughs> here but but just giving me this sense of continuing his work because he has a lot to share now did he play the piano also or is that something he yes. thought about doing okay no, he plays he plays yeah. piano yes Okay, because he's showing me at the at the keys and like um, composing more. Now, do you either one of you sit at the piano as well? Yeah, okay. I do. Okay. Yeah. So Sheila, I know that he's also at and at times you may actually feel your fingers lift off the keyboards. Mm -hmm or you have a knowingness of where to place them, but there's something like he's wanting to use your fingers to be able to um, 
Right. So trust when, when you're doing that and you may not know what you're doing and no. at the same time he does. So I, I just get this sense about you being, if anything, uh, a type of translator, if that seems like the appropriate word to use, but you're sure. translating the thoughts mm -hmm. um, into writing. Does okay. that make sense? It does. Yeah. I started playing again after not playing for years. Uh, I just started last week actually playing. Oh my goodness. So I got after. chills from head to toe <laughs> with that. So I know yeah. that he loves having you there, mom. And, and there's something too, as I said, you know, composing um, or just free flowing. <laughs> I feel like he, he would just do, um, cause he, I should be so happy. And I just see him like um, making all these faces. So I don't know if he really got <laughs> into his music uh, when he yes. would do this, but I, I just see like um, very connected and also very active with that. Good. And Warren, does uh, <laughs> that make sense as well, I guess? Yeah, it does. Good. So yeah, keep, it does. Keep... He, he was always, you know, writing music, sitting at the piano, coming up with new compositions. And, and uh, it's just just last week. I don't know if you've done it before, but I was in the house and I heard somebody playing the piano. And it was her. And I was like, did somebody break into our house and start playing the piano? <laughs> right. Because it's such a a trigger and and so i i didn't approach her and i just heard her playing like actually playing yeah a bit rusty but yeah no you were playing yeah, it, yeah it's all coming back and and you know my feeling once again is nolan is living through you so mm -hmm. so just remember when you're guided and it may be do you get up during the night sometimes and just want to go or you think about <sighs> getting up and don't actually do it because i i just feel like yeah. he's going to give you those nudges that mom just just go and and i just see him you know behind you supporting you kind of pushing you forward so i feel like this return to music this connection again um Mm -hmm. Whether you realize it or not, you're doing it for him, and you may okay. know that fully. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's been hard to do, but um, I feel closer to him. Yes, music. and the more that you stay in the heart as you bring your energy level up, it does help once again to build that connection, making it easier to sense him and to talk to him and, and everything else as well. I love what? that. Yes. Well, I'm glad you all came on so that you could <laughs> yeah, hear thanks. it firsthand yeah. as well. Yes. Like I said, when he first, he was the first one coming in, almost like he was, I guess, storming the stage. Like I'm <laughs> first. And, and, and he did it in a way that um, yeah. he was almost like the starting the show, I guess is how yeah. we'll, we'll say. He was the he opening act. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. He always did. And I'm, I'm glad to hear he's helping others too. That's good. Yes. He is helping and definitely um, <laughs> helping to bring others through too. So I know, I love that. I know yeah. that that's part of his mission as well. Yeah. He does that. Yeah. That, that would be him. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, thank you both, and I'll thank leave you. you with that this evening. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much. So thank much. You're nice. welcome. Nice. You are welcome. Watch well, the yeah, recording we from the beginning. <laughs> and I just wow. want to say, if anyone has not watched the conference video, please do so, because Nolan is singing oh. on there, and he is so amazing with his beautiful red hair, and um, I on the piano. He's playing the piano as well. So you all will get a better idea of what Nolan's like, but he was also on um, Amer not America's Got Talent, is it? Yeah, America's Got Talent. Well, America's his friends were, his talent. friends, yeah. He was chosen for it. And so there are many video clips about Nolan as well. And so thank you both for coming on. on such <laughs> Thanks for calling. Yeah, that was, that was, I, was that I was texting, I was texting. I was like, what's that noise? I, th I think someone's Facebook calling you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't have your number handy, so I was like, oh my gosh. Bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Shelly. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, sure we'll I see. also had other dads calling me, and yeah, because <laughs> they're on here, too. No, you oh, I love it. it. I just want you to know that Nolan brought through Judy's son as well. So Judy. I love that. When you were watching in the beginning, um, 
he was able to be brought through because of Nolan. So I'm excited wow. about that as well. And have a wonderful evening. And thank you for being on here. <laughs> thank <Really>? you. <laughs> so that oh, was wonderful, that. Shelley. How exciting. Yes. And, and what we want to remember too, even in moments like this, when we feel the joy, when others make that connection, once again, it helps to build our own connection to our loved ones. So just keep that in mind also. And as I've said before, if there are any aspects of that that resonate with you and your own child, please receive it because that's the beautiful way that they connect with us as well. I am going to post the video in the chat box in case anybody hasn't been able to see it mm -hmm. uh, just so that i can let you guys know what this link is that i'm posting but let's keep going <laughs> yes let's keep going so what i'm seeing now is i'm seeing a younger child this time and i do see um darker skin when i look at him and he looks to be i want to place him in the age four to six when I see him also, I see him very thin. I, I feel like there was some health issues connected to him. And I do feel like he was unable to absorb nutrients, something to that effect, like there was a deficiency with him. And I get a sense too um, that it was ultimately that... Um, it doesn't necessarily feel like a cancer type condition, but I feel like some type of deficiency. And that's the best way that I can describe it. Now, I know that's just a little bit of information, but does this make sense with anyone? And I'm seeing longer legs. Um, so I feel like he might have even been, you know, his normal height for his age, but he was just very thin, is how I want to describe it. Uh, nothing so far. A moment. Now I do feel um, with this younger child as well, I, I just get a sense, as I said, that um, there may have been, they may not have even realized parents, his parents, I need to clarify, may not have realized um, that there were any type of health concerns until, um, because I just feel small in weight, makes sense. Um, that he was below um, the weight that he should be. And I do just ultimately feel like um, he passed. I, starvation seems like a harsh term to use, but I do want to use the term deficient, that there's something with that um, health issue connected to him. I'll just take a moment, and if this doesn't resonate, I'm just going to um, know that he was coming in for a reason. I just see big eyes with him, too, so I get a softness about him, um, and I do get a peaceful feeling about him, um, but I feel like he just wants to to tell his parents to not blame themselves, that, you know, there is something about the deficiency um, that ultimately caused this. So this is how I want to want to um, convey it. Rangina is saying, my son was sick during his entire life, including at that age of four to six. Mm -hmm. he lived until 18, he dealt with nutritional issues that led to starvation, but he was also diagnosed with cancer. Um, does that resonate with you at all? Now, does this, it's let's go ahead and bring her on just because, um, if the, if the, mm -hmm. um, description fits, this could be why he was showing me at the younger age yes. and not the older age. Hi, okay. Rangina. I've asked her to unmute. Yeah, could you unmute? Yes. Hi. Oh, there you are. Hi, Regina. Okay. Now, um, okay, I can see see your picture up there. Now, so all of that makes sense with him, except the age per se. And then he did have cancer, but it was when he was older. He he dealt with cancer pretty much his entire life too. He was diagnosed five times. Okay. Uh, so yeah, 
So let me ask you, when I was um, describing this young man to you, could you connect to it? Did energetically it feel like your son? With everything you said, yes, it does sound like my son. Because I, I have a warmth as I tune in to him. And, and to me, this warmth is a reminder of healing. I practice Reiki and many times that Reiki energy kicks in and um, reminds me of even sending healing as we do this. Okay. Can I build the connection with your son for you? Sure. Thank and you. Can I have his first name, please? His first name is Samir. Samir. Okay. So does it make sense too that he tended to be very reserved or very quiet um, most of his life as well? When he was younger, no, very cheerful. But as he was getting older, older, men, a few words is what people used to say. And a few words, okay. Because I do feel um, almost like he had to reserve his energy, if, if that makes sense. Almost, you know, cocoon, I think of someone also very sensitive, but that he had to just, um, you know, use, he, he would spend a lot of energy or a lot of energy would be spent trying to communicate with others, be active, things like that. So I feel like um, that's how I want to say it. Does that make sense to you? Um, energy in terms of uh, nutrition. Yes, or... yes. Nutritional energy, conserving his own energy, um, just so that he could keep going in that way. Yeah. Okay, so so what I pick up, you know, from him, first of all, I just feel this gentleness about him. I, I get this sense that, you know, he's wanting to come in. And of course, you will have memories throughout his life of him and, and throughout your life of him. And, and I just get this sense that he doesn't want you to dwell on what you feel like you couldn't make better. Can you understand that? Yeah. Okay, because he's just saying, you know, and I, I feel like he wants to call you mama, something, and it may be in your native language, of course, but this feeling of mama and this sense of just reminding you that he is at peace, that he is well, and that he is healthy now. You know, he, he gives me this sense almost like showing me a transformation now that he has muscles and that he has, um, you know, a thickness to his skin. But I knew that he was wanting me to, that he's at a healthy weight. He says, say that I'm at a healthy weight, because I know that that was something that perhaps he strived for or struggled with um, throughout his life also. And, and he just gives me this sense of, um, you know, continuing to learn. And I know many of our loved ones do when they cross over, but he just says that he's fulfilling his destiny, that he's completing his task. So I know that from your perception, anything that he may not have fulfilled here while he was on earth, he just gives me this sense that he wants to convey to you that he has fulfilled that. And he's also telling me as well, that, um, and he's just showing me a book. So I don't know if this is a journal, a picture book, something that you, a scrapbook, something that you may have kept notes in or things like that. And this book may be a religious type book as well, but just giving me this sense about going back to the book, looking at the book. So can you understand that also? No. Okay. <clears throat> This may be um, something that has another interpretation um, and it could be more symbolic than literal as well. Um, and, and this may indicate too, during this time was your faith tested? And can, does that resonate that your faith or beliefs or something was being tested? Yeah. I, I feel like this may be what he's referencing, almost like um, returning home, connecting uh, more deeply to that. And it could be 
also that there's something that you will compile that you've been thinking about also if we're thinking literal as well. Okay, he, he just gives me this feeling of reminding you that he is okay to not have those thoughts of when he wasn't. And I know that that may be hard and, and not even realistic, but he doesn't want you to dwell on that if possible. Okay, so I want to leave you with that, Regina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I just want to say, too, once again, I know that sometimes things make absolute sense in this moment and other things may feel more symbolic or they may make sense later. So just keep in mind as well that it's running through my frame of reference as I look at this information and then I do my best then to convey it to you in a way that understands. Okay. Now, was there by chance anyone else that that description connected with, or we will continue to see who's here tonight. We have another, uh, Shell, her son uh, passed at 18 from an eating disorder. He had huge brown eyes, but he was blonde. Um, and then we also have uh, Laura Rosa, who says that her cousin's son passed suddenly at four from a nutrition absor absorption disorder. He did not have darker skin, though. Um, her son, her son, Laura's son, did have darker skin. So those and, are. And Laura's son, is he in spirit also? I would assume if she's I on. Believe night that she's yeah she said her nephew and then their son yes. so laura roses let's let's go ahead and just bring laura sure. on by chance because this could be a another situation of joining forces she's here hi laura Kelly, can you see me there you are okay i'm going to spotlight you there we go so laura this was your nephew that fit that description okay yes. And um, he is in spirit, just to clarify. Yes, he's with me. Yeah. And then your son is also in spirit as well. Okay, so let's let's just take a moment. What is your nephew's name? You know, I have to actually, I, I have it right on a card right over here. Can mm -hmm. you mind if I just go grab that? No, that's he fine. That's a while ago and I don't... Um, can't think of it right and now. if anything this could be laura his his way of helping to bring through your son also so david david, david. okay yeah i haven't looked at it so long. that makes sense with him um description and the deficiency because i knew i needed to use that term mm -hmm. okay so i i just once again i just get this sense from this child um you know that piece all as well nothing to um, feel conflicted about or to dwell upon. Now, I do want to take this opportunity to see about bringing in your son. So let me just take a moment here. Now, does it make sense too that your son um, was in his 20s when he passed? Yep, he okay. was 20. And, and does it make sense too um, that it was sudden and unexpected with him? Yeah. And does it make sense there's something even with his heart um, going on because all of a sudden I just felt a heaviness or a pressure in the chest. Um, perhaps depression. Okay, that's absolutely. When I read energy, I, I feel it in the heart. Um, if there is any type of emotional, mental, as well as if there's physical diagnosis too. So let's build your son's energy. Can I get his first name? Ishmael. Ishmael. Okay, so Ishmael, does it make sense also, um, he, he's giving me pressure in the head, so does it make sense that there was either a physical issue, something that occurred, or he worried a lot? Because once again, I can read that pressure in two separate different, two separate ways. Yeah, I would imagine he worried a lot. Okay, and, and he gives me a sense too, almost like um, not uh, feeling like he fit in or that he even he wasn't good enough. 
Can can you understand that statement also? I am. Yeah, I think he, you know, kept those feelings to himself. But yes. But from your perception, even in reflection, you can perhaps recognize that. Yeah. Um, Ishmael wants to give me this sense because his, and and I may have said this already, but that it his his passing was sudden and unexpected. Did mm -hmm. I say that already? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I I heard it again, so I needed to say it again. Um, and I do feel it's he's showing me the month of July for some reason. So I don't know if July is a birth month or passing month or another month of significance, or he's recognizing it for someone else. Yeah, maybe for, I mean, it, my mother's birthday is in July. Um, I can't think of another connection. I'm not sure if that would be what he's recognized. This could be yeah. something that is to come that has not happened yet. So if you've got something you've planned or thinking about planning, that could be why he's bringing me that reference. Now, ultimately, Laura, what I pick up from Ishmael too is, you know, just this sense of head bowed. And I don't know if this is because of something that occurred or he's just wanting to come to you in a way of love and just saying, you know, mom, I, I'm okay. You know, he gives me the sense of not being a, um, being a lover, not a fighter is what he's telling me. So I, I just feel, you know, this sense of um, peacemaker is how I want to describe yeah. Too. And so maybe the head bound is a humbleness that he's wanting to describe as he comes to you as well. Um, does it make sense that he would be apologizing to you for some reason or saying, I'm sorry? Yes, he has, he's come through and said, I'm sorry. Because okay, because I, I just feel like in this sense and in that he wants to just say, you know, mom, I'm sorry. And if, and it could be too, Laura, just, I'm sorry for not being here. I'm sorry that I um, had to go, you know, that sense too. I do feel once again, with his state of being, definitely this sense of awareness about him. I feel like he was sensitive when he was here, aware yeah. when he was here, but I do feel like he's even, um, risen is a word he wants me to use as he is in the new place is what he's saying and so of course we can think of that as heaven or the other side and I don't know if you've relocated since he's passed also that he would be referencing new place with that as well I haven't okay. no are you by chance thinking about relocating um I don't have plans right now no I, I just, I heard new place. And once again, this could apply in a few different ways. So I'll just leave that statement and trust that it will be understood. And I, I just want to tell you once again, this sense of appreciation to you and this sense of um, even, even accomplishment. So I don't know if um, what he's wanting to give you a, a congratulations for good job and this may be too that um, you're building the connection to him so mm -hmm. it, it could be a few different ways that we can interpret that as well okay so I want to go ahead and leave you with that this evening Laura yeah. and Ishmael just gives me the sense of you talk more to him and at the same time trust what you sense so it'll be a thought a feeling an impression and so on all right thank you you're welcome so Shelly we have one other person Melissa mm -hmm. is saying her son's birthday is in July and she feels that he's here again as the death was his death was sudden and an undetected heart issue he was very humble and a true peacemaker mm -hmm. sensitive I'm thinking of moving she says I actually saw him when Nolan came in I'm so happy so okay I just absolutely I got chills with that too so there were several and I think it was all uh boys men this evening uh male that were wanting to come through for whatever reason so these young men were joining forces hoping to make that connection and several of them did tonight. So once again, please accept what resonates with you because this is how, once again, they provide us with these messages. That's beautiful. So we have just a few more minutes, about four more minutes, if you would like to leave us 
with some tips on connecting with our children ourselves, possibly. Yes, and absolutely. Thank you. And, and I mentioned a few at the beginning. And the main thing, once again, is to bring your energy back to the heart. If you're sad, feel sad, of course. If you're frustrated, feel frustrated. But as often as you can, bring the energy back to heart and do your best to lighten the energy. This can be putting on music, dancing, moving your body, going for a walk. However, you can quiet your mind so that you can receive, once again, the thoughts and feelings and impressions that come through. They will communicate to you through signs, once again, the beautiful animal messengers, the butterflies, the dragonflies, the cardinals, other animals as well, and the number sequences, and those coins that we find in unexpected places. There's so many ways that they say we're here, but we have to know that's absolutely them. And as I said before, they will visit us during our dream state, but oftentimes we may not remember our dreams. So they like to come through during our waking hours and will give us the, the memories and show us things. And we have to trust and know that it is them and we're not just originating that thought of them. That's beautiful. So um, it's funny because uh, Judy is saying that she just started doing that again. She guesses that singing with couch choir was the right thing to do. Which yes, is absolutely, Judy. And um, <laughs> this is so wonderful to have so many people touched by the readings that you did this evening. And um, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for the donation of the donations. This will help Helping Parents Heal. And I, we always ask everyone to unmute and say thank you and good evening before you go um, back to what you were doing. Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.